was going to do a, a narrated step-by-step. Ah, oh, what a lovely day. So here's a point of view tutorial, tutorial for a 20-inch uh, path with homemade chalk transition pattern. I'm going to pace off 10 10 paces. I'm going to put my uh, center pivot there. And then I'll cue on the towers there. About a path width or so back from the center. Start drawing the entry to the center. About two or two or three path widths long. And then I'm going to do three path width radius. There's two. There's three winding up on the line. Put the right time there. My knuckle on the pivot and drag the first circle. Stopping at the line. So I'm going to bring this down about a path width below the center circle. And then finding a point tangent to the center circle and the entry path to the middle. Pivot on the left time in line with the center 180 degrees. Then follow this around using the inside circle as a as a guide. I'm going to stop about a path width and a half away from the line. Darken this up a little bit. And I'm going to find my next point. Two path widths from the center line. From the entry to the center line. And two path widths from the center circle. Oops. So it's going to be about here. do another 180 and then continue this around using the previous line and then continue this one around Then center circuit out to the fourth circuit. Stop about there. I have four path widths. I need five more. So I'm going to space it out. And one, two, four five treat my pivot and somewhere in here one two three four five six seven so I have three paths to the left of the pivot three paths to the right of the pivot and the end of my three path width radius turn is going to be on the center line of the entry into the middle. So I'll make a little mark here and then go over three path widths. One, there's 
two, there's three. So where that crosses this line, that is gonna be where my pivot goes. It's about there. Ballpark, close enough. So I'll set my pivot in there. Place the chalk on this line. And if I've measured correctly, I should wind up getting that one over there. There we go. So that's my three path width radius turn. I'm gonna make the inside of that. And then a set of stacked turns nested inside this other turn. So same thing here, to complete the other part of my diamond is going to be the entry path into the labyrinth. So I'm going to continue this. One, two, three, maybe a little bit farther. Because I want this third line to stop three path widths from here going to be another three path width radius turn. So I've got one, two, three. I need to get to here. So I'll continue this around until I get to that distance away. pivot followed by a two path width radius turn and then this entry should wind up one path width wide roughly and I use that as my entrance into the labyrinth and then take this all the way around. Now the transition labyrinth has one labyrinth at the top in line with the point at the bottom of the diamond shape there through the center of the entry into the middle and then It's two path widths wide. So um, there's the center line. There's the edge of the one labrys. There's the edge of the other labrys. And then I'm going to pivot one path width away from here. Same thing on the other side. And then I've got to eyeball this to connect this path across the top of this 
longer labras, so I'll make myself some reference points that I can hit as I'm kind of going cross country. Two path widths away from the inner lines. So now I have some in intermediate targets to hit. So this keeps the circle a little smoother. There we go. And then it's just connect all the dots. So that's the pattern with a three path width radius center. Five petals fit inside. So find a point that's about there. One down the center. And then one kind of equidistant between these two. And then so that people get the idea that they're supposed to walk it, I usually write enter down here. 